Romans chapter 9. So my takeaway with Romans chapter 9 is the two seed lines. Because in verse 22, it's going to talk about vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. And then in verse 23, it says, which he had a four prepared unto glory. So we are predestined, preordained, and there is a seed line that is fitted to destruction. What are they called in Matthew 13? The wheat, that is us, and the tares, the devils, Satan, the dragons, seed line, the wicked line of Cain. That's my take. Let's see what you think. Romans 9, let's begin. I say, the truth in Christ I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Remember, this is all Paul. Paul's writing all of Romans. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are the Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God has taken no effect for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called? That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promises are counted for the seed. Really just sit with Romans 9 verse 8 there. Just, just, just sit with that for a while, see what you think about that. The entire Bible is a war between the two seed lines, and it's everywhere once you have that lens. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Wow. That's, a, that's, that's huge. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For this scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all of the earth. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, on whom he will harden. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why do you yet find fault for you who has resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and unto and another unto dishonor? And here we go, verse 22 and 23. What if God, willing to show his wrath, make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory? On the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. That's us, guys. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, 
but also the Gentiles. That's us. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like Gomorrah. What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness, which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Do you understand what that says? So the Jews would never believe that Christ was their Messiah. They didn't believe that. They crucified, as you know, they crucified him, and they kept wanting to do, you know, continue with works of the law. And that is their stumbling stone. And it will be their stumbling stone in the end. As it is written, behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And all God's people said, stay in the word.